Uh, what's up? It's your boy Carcino here. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button, and definitely hit that bell and uh, select all because, you know, YouTube keep coming up with lies and excuses. But that's not why we're here. Now, Atlanta Records have made plans. And when I say Atlanta Records, of course, I mean uh, Marsha St. Hubbard. And a lot of people forget about uh, Donnie Harper. She's involved as well. You know, they're in charge of the urban marketing uh, process over there at Atlanta Records. You know, I follow uh, Marsha and, you know, keep in contact with the marketing that's going on over there. But some of the decisions are a bit sketchy, to say the least. And what I mean... I understood where their direction was going, but the ego of the rappers, and especially when you're dealing with different record companies, um, it can be a headache sometimes. Now, the motorsport incident wasn't going to be a big problem because motorsport was the Migos record. Um, it wasn't Cardi B's record. It wasn't Nicki Minaj's record. It was a Migos record. So for that collaboration to work, that wasn't going to be too much of a problem because Atlantic had already gave permission for Cardi to be with the Migos on because the Migos are what people are not know of. They are not signed with Atlantic Records. Okay, so you no, know, that might come as a shock to people. They're not. So Anyway, they um, they uh, had plans when Nicki Minaj was on the record and they were like, oh, this is going to be huge because Nicki and Cardi would be on the same record. You know, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, what's going to sound like? So when they premiered it and they didn't let Cardi do her verse and they were going to try to make this song like the biggest song ever. With the collaboration between the two. They wanted this to be a success. Like an easy transition between the two parties. So that's why they wanted, you know, Nikki to take Cardi's name out. Anything that would sound like a diss towards Cardi, the record label agreed. You know, take that out. Because we don't want to have that narrative. Because they were in hopes of having Nicki Minaj make an appearance or have a song on Cardi's album. They were very welcome to that. And a lot of people don't understand that Atlantic Records had no ill wills towards Nicki Minaj, period. It's, they have nothing against, she's not their artist. Of course, they treated her ex accordingly. They're looking out for Cardi because that's their artist. This is their project. They put a lot into Cardi B, so... For Cardi to be successful, they don't need anything detracting, especially something that they're supporting, to be a detraction to them. So putting it in this, you know, sentiment, uh, they were looking forward to this. They were very excited about the possibilities of a featured song with Cardi and Nicki Minaj on this album. So when the motorsport thing went the way it did, it didn't turn out the right way. Um, the video came out bland because everybody did individual spots and they blended it together. It didn't they, it was clear at that point that they weren't going to continue to work together, even though they tried to play friends on social media. It was clear that a collaboration with the two would be a disaster or something would go wrong, egos, somebody has the bigger dressing room. It's a, it's a, the boy is mine type situation. And that's what they were talking about at Atlantic Records too. And that word, that phrase was actually brought up. The boy is mine situation. We don't want to have the boy is mine situation with Brandy and Monica and create a 20 year war between the two artists who don't speak really to this day. After 
mending and coming together, personalities and egos get involved, especially in this business. So, I think a missed opportunity happened. I won't ever say it won't happen. I believe there's a bigger possibility of it happening once a humbling takes place. When people become humbled and they see a bigger picture and they say, man, we would have really made something more had we just worked together. We could have really did like a sisterhood or what have you and really make something special. But instead, we let our egos lead us. And when you let your egos lead you, thinking people are always against you, thinking when they really are not, you create a worse type of situation. Well, Cardi don't have PC training for a lot of you people out there who don't get it. Uh, she's not PC. She's not politically correct. She's all over the place. She's always been. Cardi's always been that politically correct, uh, I mean, non-political correct person. The statements she makes sometimes, she doesn't know what to say or how to say it. She just speaks from her heart. So she didn't mean any malice when she was like, oh, she had to change the rap. She had to change it. You know, like, because she assumed that it was something bad. Because she didn't understand what the verse was anyway. But once it was explained to Cardi that she wasn't disrespecting her. And she just went and t- took her name out. It is what it was. You know, it wasn't, well, we're not going to release this song until she changed the verse kind of crap that other people were trying to sell you. This is what it was. So, Nikki, her perspective is, they're copying me. They're watching my Instagrams and Twitters to see what I'm going to do next, and then they're going to give it to Cardi. So, this is all majority coming from Nikki's side. And it's part of her delusion of grandeur. But it's the same thing she done, and her team done, with Little Kim. They put her in the same predicament. So, it's like the pendulum swings around, now it's her turn to get it. The same type of things, and now she's She's saying the same things Little Kim was saying about her. Right? So, I'm out. You tell me what you think in, in the comment section.